this will be lecture 54, which uh, generates the orthorhombic lattice. Uh, uh, you recall that uh, the way we're generating uh, these lattices is that uh, we're taking our um, 2D base that we've already developed and said what kind of uh, T3 is compatible with it. As we increase the symmetries uh, in the base with these different symmetry elements, we're finding that we create different kinds of three-dimensional lattices. So we started off with our primitive um, a lattice that we created which um, is called trigonal. <clears throat> and then we moved on and said, all right, what happens if we, instead of just the simple P1, what happens if we do P2? And we found out that uh, with the limitations of the twofold axes, we generated monoclinic uh, lattices. Then we moved on and said, so just to recap, we had P1 which gave us trigonal, which is a completely general. And then we said, let's look at P2, and that gave us monoclinic. Mono, uh, remember that the monoclinic, that the options, the options of primitive body and side center literally came from the places, the unique places in which we could translate up to where the two-fold axes were. And of course, we found out that there's, in the case of monoclinic, there isn't any difference between these. So we picked up two lattices. And we found out that if we looked at M, PM, CM, that we ended up, and PG, I think it was, uh, nothing changed because these just produced the, the limitations of having the mirror plane were very similar to the limitations of P2 and they didn't generate any new types of lattices. It also means, of course, conversely, that these symmetry elements will all be compatible with the um, monolith, monoclinic lattice if I place them in the in the right faces of that of that lattice. So today, with the orthorhombic lattice, uh, we're going to see it is generated uh, from now moving to some of the more complex symmetries, uh, in particular the P2MM type symmetries. So if you recall, So note that in all cases, if I think about uh, putting a T3 in, I can terminate the T3 above this, and I have all the symmetry elements with the mirror plane and the two-fold axis. I can come up and terminate above this one, right? because again, I'll be on the mirror plane and the two-fold axis. I could terminate here. And I could terminate here. So those are the options. Now, um, uh, I don't need to redo this because this is the basically the same symmetry as we did before. Um, the only difference is that we have uh, right angles, but uh, you know, in the in the plane, and then when I do T3, I'm straight up, and then when I do my adjustment for side centered, bodied center. Um, all of them end up having uh, these right angles, right? And so the key thing here is that the base actually has a right angle where in the monolithic, ca uh, monoclinic case, uh, they actually didn't have to have this uh, right angle in here. And so it's not surprising we don't generate anything new in these cases. Again, it's the same thing for all of these variants of the same kind of thing, like this is P2MM, P2MG, P2GG. And we're just showing you that because... Uh, of the location of the twofold axes, we 
we have to move a T3 up into those two-fold axes uh, and um, the environment is the same with respect to the uh, mirror planes and so for all four of these cases uh, sorry all four of these uh, choices on all cases are the same and what we end up with is a if we choose the t3 where we have zero zero you know z which is straight above that gives us the orthorhombic primitive then if i choose the center i end up of course with body centered so orthorhombic means that of course uh, all axes are equal to each other and 90 degrees apart and that's really set up because of the base that I've chosen here, which are these P2MM type uh, bases. Uh, but the links can be any length, right? In fact, they have to be different because if I start making this equal, then I get higher symmetry and we're not there yet. So orthogrombic is sort of heading towards our favorite and loved very common cubic, except that the all three sides are different lengths. Another thing to note here is that uh, unlike the monoclinic system, uh, the side center and body center are distinct. That is, there's no transformation we can do in the base that we did to transform it. Because remember, in the case of in the case of um, the monoclinic, I could switch the parallelogram definition and not change the symmetry. I end up with just another monoclinic lattice. Uh, with either side centered or body centered. The way that I did that was, um, let's say that I, I'm in the bodied centered one here. Remember, I shifted to a lattice that had a side cutting through like this. Now, note that in this case, um, I can't really do that. Uh, I could change to a parallelogram and put that on the side, right? But then uh, I would have uneven sides. I mean, I, 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 um, the angles would change, and so I change from a orthorhombic uh, to, I guess, some sort of, um, yeah, I guess some sort of monoclinic lattice, which would be artificially lower symmetry. So in this case, uh, the side-centered and body-centered distinct, I can't transform between the two. Uh, clearly, you know, side-centered case here, I don't get the side-centered if I you know, move to some lattice like that, that doesn't give me the one here, which would be side-centered, right? So unfortunately, because it's not a parallelogram, I can't play the same trick. So the bodied centered and side-centered are distinct and unique in the orthorhombic system. Finally, uh, we actually do get a different, uh, a different possibility when I look at C2MM. And that's because it's a centered lattice with this uh, higher symmetry. Uh, of course, if I take the just the OOZ transition, I get the same kind of orthorhombic primitive back. However, uh, there is another option. So let me draw that. Actually, let me clean up this first. Recall that in the C2MM case, We have these extra twofold axes that are in the center of each one of these quadrants. 
So in this case, I have two choices. Now note that I can't put this guy above this guy because that has two glide planes going through it where this has two uh, mirror planes. However, I could translate all the, all the way over here and put it above this one. But if you think about it, this is exactly the same if you were to fill 3D uh, with being over here. And so that's not a unique point. That's the same as going straight up here. So actually, in this case, there's only two cases. And in this case, of course, I end up with primitive again. Uh, but what's interesting this time is that if I go here, if I go up and up to this, remember the full translation cell is over here. So now we have a new kind of um, uh, cell that we didn't create before, and it's not just side-centered, because if I use that as a translation, it's going to be the same uh, when I when I fill this out, it's going to be the same on that side and everything. So I end up with uh, a new structure for this one. So we end up with our first uh, face centered. So by using uh, a series of P2MM, P2MG, P2GG, we see that uh, we end up with orthorhombic primitive side centered and bodied center. And then finally, we pick up uh, one more type orthorhombic face centered by looking at C2MM and seeing that we have a unique trans uh, third translation vector that can sit um, on the side, in this case, because of the more filled in points here uh, in the C2MM base uh, that we had derived before.